Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's Church in Nantucket. After some opening sentences, our vocalist will sing for us. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. continues with the confession of sin. Let's confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry 
and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Let's pray together the Venite that's found in your bulletin. O come, come, let, let us, us sing, sing unto, unto the Lord. Lord. Let, let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. salvation. Let, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the kingdoms of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. Come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth. Please be seated. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 30. You'll find it in your leaflet and we will read it responsively. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up. And I have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you. And you restored my health to me. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life and I was going down to the grave. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. Give thanks for the remembrance of his holiness. For his wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye. His favor for a lifetime. Weeping may spend the night. But joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face. I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with the Lord, saying, Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This is a reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 7 through 5. 15. As you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, 
so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter, I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something, now finish doing it so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. him 
and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her to leave the comb which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> Our psalm today. You have turned my wailing into dancing, O Lord. You have put my, off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. This is a classic gospel from Mark, kind of typical of Mark's stories in that Mark begins one story of Jesus' ministry and then inserts another story in the middle of it, and then ends up going back to the original story and finishes the scene. Um, and it's, such, it's uh, consistent with my life, because I've learned over the years in my bu business life, and especially in my ministry, that I can plan out my schedule, I can, you know, I can have everything in my date book, and everything's lined up, but then the interruptions happen, right? The stuff of life comes into your schedule, and into your calendar. And I found over the years the important ministry that I've done is in the interruptions, not what I actually plan to do. And so 
Jesus, you know, just like with the story of, of Lazarus, remember, they came to Jesus, he was far away, he started working his way back towards the home of Lazarus, had all these interruptions on the way, took care of that, and then went, and, and, and just like in a story, that people think it's too late. You get distracted with this work, and now it's too late to do what we asked you to do. But of course, Jesus comes through in spite of all the interruptions and, and comes onto the scene, and all is well, right? All is well. And so the story of, um, of illness, uh, um, you know, in the ancient world, um, the real horrible thing about being ill is that you're, you're absolutely isolated from the rest of the community, right? The woman with the hemorrhage should be considered um, unclean because of her perpetual breathing, uh, uh, bleeding over those years. She wouldn't be allowed to come to temple to worship. She'd be an, an untouchable, she'd be an outcast um, in her world. Um, and the same with, the, you know, with Jairus' daughter. Um, only, only the professionals would deal with a, a corpse, with a, a dead body. Um, any family members would be considered unclean, would have to have purification after dealing with, with that situation. And so the, the sad part of illness in the ancient world, of disease, um, is not so much the physical suffering, uh, but the emotional and spiritual suffering of being marginalized, rejected, uh, kicked to the curb. You know, and, so, and so often, you know, I think maybe things um, haven't changed all that much over 2,000 years. You know, when I go to see uh, someone in the hospital or in, in a, you know, homebound with an illness, I, and if I, if I sense that they have some good care around them, there's a Thanksgiving prayer in the back of our book, one of our Thanksgivings, and it, you know, in that prayer, we thank God for the, you know, the beauty of the world, you know, the wonder of creation, and the miracle of love in our lives. And then there's a line, and we thank God for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. And so that's our hope. That, you know, when even those of us, when we're sick, we, we realize, yes, we have loving care of, of doctors and nurses and family members and friends around us. But don't we feel um, isolated, right? Isolated in our illness, you know, isolated in our, in our, our grief, um, even though we sense the, the, the love around us also, uh, we feel very much alone. And I was thinking this morning how sad it is that when we, as a nation or a society, uh, sadly sometimes over the years as a church, um, that people have been marginalized. People have made to, to seem lesser than, that they don't deserve the same rights as us, or that they have to earn something that we don't have to earn just by being born who we are. Um, how sad that is. Um, and I, I know myself, um, not for any sympathy, but from, you know, from what we used to call being from a, a broken home, that that has, um, you know, and we were in a different denomination in the Episcopal Church, a Christian denomination that was much more judgmental of, um, of remarriage, and, um, and that that marginalization played out in a way that maybe wasn't as um, healthy for, for families as it could be. And so we need to look at our policies, our laws, our attitudes, um, who's being left out, who, who's being ostracized and left from joining us at the table. And I, I thank God that at, at St. Paul's and the Episcopal Church in general, we've looked at that over the years and said, you know, we welcome everyone. There's no membership requirements here. Everyone is welcome to the Lord's table to be fed by the sacraments. Everyone is welcome, um, and, um, and that's a commitment we make, and we have for, for years, right, for years. Before the Episcopal Church, St. Paul's Church in Nantucket has made that commitment. I had a friend uh, that I took to church years ago, back in the early 80s, and it must have been, um, it was a reading like this, a healing reading um, about Jesus healing. And so my friend said, you know, I, I, I hate these stories of healing that are in the Bible. I said, well, what do you mean? It's a beautiful story of someone healing. You look at this, this, this girl being uh, resuscitated from death, and, you know, and you know, we know in the story eventually she'll die too, but again she's brought back into community, back into community, just like the woman with the hemorrhage. Um, it was you know, brought back into community so she could be spiritually healed the most important way. And so my, my friend said, you know, my, my grandmother was very sick, and she was a faithful person all her life, never missed church, um, lived her life as a, as a good Christian, a faithful person, and we prayed for her to be better, and God didn't let that happen. 
you know, she, she died anyways. And I, so I resent hearing these stories. It's like our prayers weren't good enough. My grandmother wasn't good enough, you know, to be saved uh, by God. And how sad that is when we have, when, when we can have that, um, that attitude. But, but I understand what she means. Sometimes, you know, we pray and pray, and we know what God's will for all of us is health, um, and, and that we know that we're saved, we know God's love. And then also some things, sometimes it doesn't work out the way that we dream, that we pray, that we hope for. Um, and so, you know, this week we had our staff meeting. When we have staff meetings on Wednesdays, one of us is assigned to be what they call the chaplain for the meeting. Um, usually I show up um, unprepared, of course, so I just pull out a prayer book and I'm ready to go, you know, with some prayers. <laughs> Joe always has um, something music related. He's quotes some, you know, some lyrics or you know, something related to music that our, our music director does. You know, Deacon Susan has some, some spiritual readings that she brings. Christine often looks on the internet and finds some kind of pop prayers, you know, related to the day. Um, so Curtis brought in a reading, readings this week that um, inspired me in, in thinking about this idea of prayer and, and you know, sometimes I'm disappointed in how things turn out. And, um, and it's from a book called A Year of Days. It's by Bishop Edmund Browning, who was our presiding bishop. I think it's back in the late 80s, early 90s. I remember hearing him preach in 1994 at General Convention, Bishop Browning. He's the one, remember, I have a, a T-shirt. Um, those are here from my first sermon. I, I did a T-shirt sermon where I held up all T-shirts from my life. Um, the last one was probably um, the Boston Red Sox winning the tw 2004 <laughs> World Series against the evil New York Yankees. And, um, and so I'd hold up the t-shirts. And one that I loved is a quote from Bishop Browning. And it says, the Episcopal Church is open to all. There will be no outcast. It says, great big letters, there will be no outcast. And that's our commitment here at St. Paul's. That's our commitment in the Episcopal Church. We strive for that, that people that have been kicked to the curb by society, by the stuff of life, will feel like they're brought back into the circle, brought back to the feast at the table. Um, and so here's a quote from Bishop Browning. I'll just summarize it some. This is from my wife Ollie's birthday on June 23rd. It's one of these day-by-day -day kind of meditations from Bishop Browning. So some researcher somewhere has determined that people who pray or have people praying for them have such and such a percent better chance of recovery from gallstones than people who don't. Good, I often pray that sick people will get well. But I also pray for many people who don't get better. If my prayers do not turn these things into the releases and healings for which I long, does that mean that my prayers have failed? Does it mean I didn't pray right, didn't pray hard enough? Hard enough? Only if the narrow test of immediate historical change is the only test of prayer's efficacy. If the only useful prayer is a prayer that works right here and right now, in just the way I want it to work, we're in trouble. Prayer is not a way to get around human sorrow, a special incantation that produces a desired result God would otherwise withhold from us. It is a thread of holy energy that binds us together. It enables the communion of my soul and the souls of all others whether I know them or not. And what are we doing when we pray for someone? Bishop Browning goes on. We are lifting them to the God who loves them. We are active when we pray for someone, and that is why, in many churches these days, the ordinary posture for intercessory prayer is standing. It's the posture of readiness for action, the posture from which a person walks forth into the world. In prayer, we walk forth, Join with those we love and worry about, also with those we've never met, commending them in their need to that infinite love and healing that holds us all in its embrace. My prayer, a thread of holy energy that binds us together. And during this uh, pandemic year, especially now, thank God that's behind us, right? And we're healing from that. But during the pandemic, um, with our nightly prayers from the attic, with with people texting us and emailing us and their prayer concerns. I have to say I felt, even though at a distance, I felt more connected in prayer uh, with, with all of you and with the wider world than maybe any other time in my long life so far.
prayer, being connected prayer, that thread that holds us together and holds us to God's hopes uh, for us. And so we go on. And I, I have this one quote from one of my books. It talks about a refocus of one's meaning in life is essential to healing illnesses. Refocus of one's meaning in life. And we've, you know, we have that refocus and our fellowship together and, and being in a prayer community, a sacramental community, a community, a community of service on the island and the world. And so our prayers continue. And we trust that God knows what's right for us. And that though our prayers have disappointed us sometimes, the way things work out, uh, we trust our loved ones are safely with God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Thank you to everyone for your patience as we continue our hybrid service. Please be seated. A hybrid service of morning prayer. This morning it's really hybrid. We had elements of right one morning prayer, some recognize, and then right two. So we've got it. Only the few clergy in the room probably noticed, but um, we're still figuring it out. So the bishop, of course, has been extra cautious here in our diocese. I know others come from other dioceses where things have been wide open for a while. We've been open for about five weeks inside and things are evolving well, um, but we also, I answer to the bishop, who answers to our even higher authority, and so, uh, and so we're moving along. It's wonderful to have our choir with us. Soon we'll be able to, our, our vocalists, uh, elements of our choir, so thank you so much. And also for, to Joey, Joey's here for the next month and a half from New York, so it's great to have our flautist here too. So maybe applause for all of them. Okay, before announcements, any visitors or guests here today, newcomers, we'd like to know first names and where you're from. If, if anyone's visiting. Yes, Kobe. Welcome, welcome so much. Welcome, welcome. Yes. Great, welcome, welcome. It's time to be out of Texas, no offense. <laughs> yes. Great, welcome. I have a lot of friends there in that area. I was in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware for years, so a lot of our Chevy Chase people were in Rehoboth Beach for the summers. Visitors, guests, others, yes. Welcome, welcome. A lot of Texans. Yeah, we had someone um, early in the week from Houston, Texas, I said, oh, we have good friends from Beaumont. They said, that's not the city. <laughs> Beaumont's not the city. I said, yeah, I think Gene has reminded that a lot of it. <laughs> Beaumont. Five more leads from Houston. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to bring a Texas flag into this church, I think. <laughs> Welcome. Visitors, guests, anyone else? Great to have everyone back. Yes, in the back. Welcome, Catherine, from Pine Hill over in Plymouth. I have good, my cousins are over there. Yes. That's, that's my voice. Santa Barbara. Oh, God's country also. Yes. Yeah. Also, it's by the sea, yes. Did you know Chris Ranker Williams? Have you been there a long time? He was a young surfing priest that was there. They always said, if the surf is up, you preach really short sermons because <laughs> he could run, go off and surf. <laughs> Marianne. Sacramento, California. Welcome, doctor. Welcome. Yes, welcome. Anyone else? Visitors, guests, newcomers? And I think you can tell everyone is welcome to Holy Communion, of course, no matter what faith record. Can... Any newcomers over here? Yes. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thanks for this. Last week you would introduce yourself, but thanks for this week. Thank you. Okay, great. Welcome, everybody. And. Um, so let me see, we have something coming up in a couple of weeks. I hope people are still here for this. It's um, July 15th. We're having our, our second um, unfair, we call it, because we had a summer fair since 1903 here. And then with the pandemic, uh, we had to cancel it last year. We had the unfair, which was um, we, had, we sold lobster or fried chicken dinners to help fund. It's a fundraiser to help fund our feeding ministries on the island, which has grown dramatically from... Uh, for, we still have our Wednesday uh, suppers. Now we're feeding about 45 a week, a nice dinner. We're up to 107 in the off season, which we'll go back to. And then we're, we're providing snacks for all the students at the uh, community school of Nantucket, including their summer program. Um, and uh, so we, we're involved with the feeding ministries. We also have our laundry love and other what we'd call outreach ministries in the community. So this lobster, it's, it's on July 15th. Uh, Sheila Dormy has um, organized it. We're calling it unfair, the Summer Unfair 2 Lobster Palooza. And um, again, even though things have opened up this year, we weren't quite ready to have 600 children on Fair Street on a day with everything else that we would normally have planned. So it was, it was just too late as things changed to, to, to organize that quickly enough. And so anyways, those that are on our email list, um, you get that message. If you want to be on our email list, please let me know so you can get uh, notice of events coming up. And so then we have some other musical events. So I'll let you know soon the dates of those. I mentioned we have a man coming from Washington um, right off Millennial Stage at uh, the Kennedy Center who sings Frank Sinatra 
um, beautiful Frank Sinatra, I think better than Frank probably in the last couple of decades of his life. And he's a retiree from the US Army Chorus. And we have special connection to the musicians in the US Army. So he'll be coming in, um, in towards the end of August. We'll have more things for you before then, though. And I think that's all I know. Again, everyone's welcome to Holy Communion, no matter what faith background you're from, including children of all ages, of course. Walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. And here we have a, a collection. And all things come of thee, O Lord, and all have we given thee. Amen. Okay. I need to do that in a different way. Let me change the water. The water. Okay. For communion, uh, um, instead of the rail, we're still we're uh, handing out communion at the crossing. So just follow the usher's instructions for coming forward. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Please stand as able. I share with you now what was handed on to me. The night before our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ died, he took bread and gave thanks to the Father, broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, take this, all of you. This is my body, which was given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. We pray, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts and be for us the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now we pray as the Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. But lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover sacrifice for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep, keep the feast. Alleluia. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Please stand as able for the prayers. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And, and guide, guide us in the way of justice, justice and truth. truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your, your saving health among all, all nations. nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor, Nor the hope, hope of the poor be taken away. away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And, and sustain, sustain us with your, your Holy Spirit. Spirit. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that may be made a holy temple acceptable to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And sanctify, O Lord, those whom you have called to the study and practice of the arts of healing into the prevention of disease and pain. Strengthen them by your life-giving Holy Spirit, that by their ministries, the health of the community may be promoted and your creation glorified. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church that in their vocation and ministry may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
continue now with our prayers and intercessions. We pray especially in loving memory of Blair Riggs Goddard and Franklin Montrose III, in whose memory the flowers are given. We pray also in celebration of Kate Crosby Robinson and James Robert Wilson, married here on Friday. Continue to pray for Frank and Sharon and their family. We pray for, for Brandon and Sarah and their family as they mourn for Brandon's dad, Jim. We hold in prayer the people of Miami and their families to our first responders there struggling to bring closure for families. Continue to pray for Daisy, for Suzanne, for Blair and Missy, for Marley and Margie, and Thanksgiving for Noah's healing. We pray for Janet and Andrew as they prepare for their wedding. We pray for the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad, especially for the Coasties here in our region and their families, the staff and volunteers at Mass General Hospital, Nantucket Cottage Hospital, for Fairwinds Counseling Center, Safe Place Crisis Intervention, and for the work of NAMI, the mental health issues in our, in our area. For those that we name now. Thanksgiving for Bishop Olette Ketlin. Pray for our own Bishop Alan Gates for his sabbatical, time of refreshment. We close now with our general thanksgiving. Let us pray together. Almighty, Almighty God, God, Father, Father of all mercies, we, we your unworthy servants, servants give you humble, humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to, us and to all whom you have made. We, we bless you for our creation, creation preservation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love and redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. We continue together. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised to your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. And the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do God's will, working in you that, that which is well-pleasing in God's sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia! Alleluia!